seen uh, examples of systemic discrimination, of systemic racism uh, in, uh, in the past days in many different ways. And that's why we need to address it seriously. That's why we need both uh, clear, independent, transparent investigations uh, in the cases brought forward, but it's also why we need to look at the entire system uh, to improve it. Welcome back. As video footage of two officers brutally arresting an indigenous leader circulated across the country, more calls are coming for police reform in Canada. And with RCMP Commissioner Brenda Lucky only now saying systemic racism exists in the organization, backtracking on earlier comments, some are looking to lawmakers to take action. What are federal MPs prepared to do to tackle police reform? Let's call in the MPs for some answers. Greg Fergus is a Liberal MP in Quebec. An Associate Conservative Public Safety Critic, Glenn Motts, is here. And Matthew Green is an NDP MP for Ontario. Welcome, everyone. So nice to see you. Thanks for being there. Um, I want to go quickly around the table, so to speak. I know we're not around the table, but I like to say that. Um, the RCMP, the, the Deputy RCMP Commissioner and the RCMP Commissioner all of a sudden today, uh, this afternoon at 4.30, decided that there is systemic race, racism in the RCMP. So I want to go quickly around, the, around and, and, and get a sense from you how it is that a Deputy RCMP a Commissioner and an RCMP Commissioner, what happened this week to both of them, uh, or is this political pressure? So I'll start with you, Greg Fergus. What did you think of the about face? Well, it's welcome. I was surprised that they took the initial position that they did, given uh, the, uh, the history that the RCMP has had, even with female Mounties within uh, their own ranks or with Indigenous peoples. Uh, systemic discrimination is in every institution. It's that unconscious bias that leads to uh, the perverse results that we see uh, on, in, in so many places and so many factors. It would be a total surprise to me if there was one institution in this country that didn't uh, have those uh, you know, didn't suffer from sy systemic discrimination and unconscious bias. Glenn Motts, um, do you think this was politically motivated? Did they have to do this? Uh, you're referring to the, the the about face from the commissioner and the deputy commissioner? I'm, uh, absolutely, yes. Well, it, it gives pause as to... Um, you know, the change in response. I mean, I appreciate uh, Commissioner Lucky's uh, questioning of, well, so what does systemic racism mean? Uh, and, and how does it apply to her organization? Uh, I think she asked some great questions and and I, I don't know whether they've been uh, politically pressured or not, but uh, I think it's uh, appropriate to, to, um, to look at every institution, as my friend Greg has said, to determine uh, those biases, and and there's no place for them. Uh, everybody is created equal, in, in uh, that that I'm that I'm aware of, and so they should be treated equally. Uh, Matthew Green, do you think then maybe a little bit of 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 you know public pressure, uh, public opinion? I mean, this has been a story that has you know grabbed headlines across the country. It's top of news. Do you think that that's that pressure came into bear? Well, I would, you know, I would suggest that although it was suggested that we're dealing with systemic, there's also very clear systematic racism within the RCMP. The very history of the RCMP was founded on policing indigenous life. So that's nothing new. In fact, her admission in, that in recent interviews, she struggled with the definition of systemic racism. As a highly decorated and long-serving member of the uh, Royal Canadian Mounted Police and ultimately now a commissioner, She's actually a product of the RCMP and a direct testament to the failures in any of the many training reforms that police have undertaken in the name of bias-free policing. I'm neither surprised at her lack of cultural competence in this regard, nor am I satisfied with her response that someone actually had to pull her aside and correct her on her own internalized racism reveals that the issue permeates to the highest levels of policing leadership across the country. Okay, so then my question is, you are three lawmakers. What can you do? Uh, the, 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 the Prime Minister promises change. We're, we're, we're hearing about body cams. We're hearing about certain things, body cams. People are not unanimous. You know, you, you talk to, 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 to provincial premiers. You talk to... to um, 
people out there who's, who are saying that's not the solution. So you are the lawmakers. What is the solution? I'll start with you, Glenn Mott, uh, because you, you wrote an interesting, uh, something interesting on social media saying that the Liberals, once again, are undermining the RCMP. So if there needs to be improvement or changes, uh, it has to come from you, uh, all of you. What would you suggest? Well, there's a couple of things. You know, I, there is a systemic biases uh, across our institutions, and as Greg said, and I and I, I agree with that. I mean, you look at uh, the breakdown of the family, and and uh, why is it that single, uh, you know, children from single parents have you know less likelihood to you know finish school and and uh, you know go on to higher education and get a good job, and uh, they're more likely to be influenced by those around them who might be involved in criminal activity. So, for a law enforcement perspective. A couple of things need to change. First of all, hiring practices need to be robust. We need to make sure that we select the right people and uh, take the time. And that's, I mean, we, law enforcement, as you know, I, I spent 35 years in law enforcement. We are an extension of the public we serve. And so we need to ensure that, that good people are, are recruited to law enforcement. Number two, we need to make sure that we are accountable to the public we serve. And, and in many, I mean, sometimes the larger the organization, the more difficult that is uh, to make happen. And so it's, it's critically important that, you know, as we, as we all know, the majority of Canadians, 70 plus percent of Canadians are policed by municipal police services across this country. And inside of those, in each province, there's a police act. And that police act governs the conduct of police officers, uh, amongst mm -hmm. other things. Yeah. And the professional standards component to that is critical. Now, do the RCMP have a, uh, a, a code of conduct? Yes, they do. But the simple fact that there's such an enormous backlog to have uh, you know, those cases properly investigated and adjudicated, uh, you know, is, 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 it gives me pause. So there's, there are some things that we can do, uh, training, education, getting involved with uh, partnering with our, our communities on doing things differently than we have. And I, I'd love All to, right. once my colleagues are finished, I'd love to get into the whole aspect of how we can partner differently with our communities and, and, and part of the whole defunding conversation. Well, I don't want to get to defunding, but Matthew Green, you believe that there should, the gas, tear gas should be banned. Am I right? Well, I, uh, absolutely. I mean, look, under the 1925 protocol, it was banned in the use of war. In 1993 Convention on Chemical Weapons, it was banned internationally, and yet we still have the militarization of police using it against civilian populations just last week in Montreal and the weekend before that in Montreal. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, we're having horrible audio problems with you, um, Matthew Green, but uh, Greg Fergus, let's talk about defunding because I know that, that there's, there's this call out there to defund police. I'm not sure what that means exactly. When you hear defunding police, what do you think? Is that a good idea? What I think is that I think we need to take a good hard look, a big rethink, frankly, about how we are policing ourselves, what type of services we provide to our communities. I think it's really unfair that we ask our police officers to be police officers, to keep the peace, to be mental health workers, to be uh, uh, social workers, uh, and to be, uh, you know, a whole bunch of different hosts, you know, to help people with, with drug addictions. I think what we need to do is that we need to focus on core competencies and we need to stop uh, always looking to the police to respond to the questions when there's a mental health issue. We should have mental health experts uh, and, and people ready to go. We should have social work experts ready to go. Uh, these people to go in and to provide those much needed services. So when I hear defunding, I hear saying, look, we need more than uh, folks who just have a uh, you know, license to use lethal force yeah. to go answer uh, calls that they shouldn't ever be called for. And we should reallocate uh, resources as a result. To me, that's a fair, a fair debate to have. Well, that's unfortunately, I know that that is a debate. That is a debate that we are going to be having, I think, in the next months for sure. Uh, that's all the time we have. Unfortunately, this was really interesting. Yeah. So Greg Fergus, Glenn Motz, Matthew Green, thanks so much. Have a great weekend and stay safe. Thank, Thank you. you, you too.